so cold. Can I hear a louder amen? Still louder, amen. Shout it louder and louder. I delight in shouting an amen, and I'll tell you why. Because the Lord Jesus is the great amen. Do you know that his name is the amen? You go to Revelation, they will tell you that. So, amen is the heavenly language in response to hallelujah. And they are all in honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, on that note, I would like to say a great and uh, another round of wonderful welcome to this Mount of Transfiguration titled Hilltop Top Encounters 2022. You are welcome to the Rock Chapel at such a time. And I am sure that the Lord has done you great already. And I believe that he will yet do more. Does anyone believe? Amen. May we rise. At a time like this, when we gather together from the east and west, from the north and south, when we gather together in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, arise and shine. O oh Lord, from the north. When we gather together in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, arise and shine, arise and shine, Jehovah. to tell the Lord who has blessed you already to add more to your blessing by arising upon your life in this session. Shall we pray? We have come together from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Every locus has the four quadrants. Even though you are in Imo State today, there is north of Imo State. There is south of Imo State. There is east. There is west. Every point of locus has the four quadrants. So whether the northern part of Nigeria is here, western part, or not, yet we have come together from the north and from the south, from the east and from the west. At such a time, the Lord is apt to arise and shine. And as he arises at this hour, May he locate somebody at this time. Make yourself locatable and certainly he will locate you. Oh Lord, arise and shine. 
as your children have come unto your presence in this place of encounter. Great Father in heaven, arise because it is the mounting of encounters. It is the mounting of transfiguration of life, transfiguration of soul and spirit. Popularly known as Hilltop Encounters of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement Campus Fellowship. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we are very grateful that we have a God that is alive and in whom we live and so must survive. The one who from the dust made all things, created man. And he is our God. And at any time, it don't change. Thank you, Great Father, who has given us all the privilege in spite of the conditions of the day. You have given us the privilege to come to your presence, knowing that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of power. Knowing that in the presence of the Lord, there is restoration. In the presence of the Lord, there is revival. In the presence of the Lord, there is answer to prayers. In the presence of the Lord, there is recovery, recoupment. Those that are cast down are lifted up. Thank you for every brother, every sister that has come to this place to be lifted up. Come, thank you for everyone that has come to receive of the Lord, to be turned around, to have the eyes opened, to be quickened and strengthened. Eternal rock of Israel, by the pressure of your word and spirit, I pray, let no such individual be left and touched in Jesus' name. Precious Father, I say, locate all that have sought you to come to your house. Whether they are new or old, whether they are men or women, whether they are boys or girls, who are in this rock chapel and around, who have come unto the God of Jacob at a time like this. Let no individual go home unlocated. Let no the weeping person return weeping. Let not the cast down return cast down. Let not the frustrated go home frustrated. Let not the heavy laden go home carrying the load away. Let there be encounters in Jesus' name. Send your angels that are ministering spirits that you normally send to minister to heirs of salvation. Lord, I stand here this morning to remind you that gathered in the rock chapel this day are heirs of salvation. Therefore, the release of your angels will not be lacking. Blessed Father, I say locate the repented, locate the year to repent. Locate the converted, locate the year to convert. Locate the sanctified and the unsanctified. Locate the baptized and the unbaptized. Let everyone be located at the points of their needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, arise and shine. Let your light beam upon the countenances of your people. Arise, O oh God, show yourself strong. And at the end of this session, let every person receive a touch that is meant for it. Let the awareness that is meant for it be granted. And may no stone be left of tongues. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I still hear a louder amen? God bless your soul and your spirit. In Jesus' name. Before us this morning is a very important message, like every message is also very important. But then, given the times in which we live, 
at such a time that many people are fainting, many believers as well, those that have been praying to the Lord, and those that have not been praying, at a time that there are, there's a lot of fear everywhere, at a time that even believers are getting confused, is God there to hear us? We are in sea. Why are all these things going on this way? As if there is no God to take heed and to answer. Now, the message we have is a message of assurance from the Almighty at a time like this. And this message is titled, Judgment is Determined. Judgment is Determined. Turn with me quickly to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1. We read the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry, and I will not hear, even cry out unto thee for violence, and I will not save why does thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before the before me, and the array that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is lacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeded. Behold, ye among the hidden, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will walk a walk in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. In chapter 2 of the same Habakkuk, we read from verse 1 to verse 3. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it, for the vision is for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. In Job chapter 20. The book of Job, the 20th chapter, reads the 4th to the 7th verses. Job 20. Knowest thou not this of old? Since man was placed on earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite for a moment, though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? Proverbs 11. And verse 21. Proverbs 11, chapter the 21st verse. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Now, the lead text is taken from the book of Habakkuk and that discloses what happened in the day of this prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk was living at a time the people of God, the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem had gone apostate and um, everyone had gone haywire in sin and abomination. There was so much violence. There was so much oppression. And the prophet had been praying and interceding, calling upon God doing his role as the watchman and as the prophet. 
while he was doing that, evil was mounting on and on. While he was doing that, it was like darkness was overrunning light. And um, everything was turning upside down as if the devil was having filled day forever. And he had come to a point, he was almost despairing and saying, how is it that you allow me to see this evil? And I've called, I've called, I've called upon you. I don't see anything happening. And God, in answer, still brought out promise. And he said, he had determined to bring judgment upon the wicked. In other words, that his prayers were not wasted. God was hearing. And God is the one that knows what to do, when to do, and how to do. So encourage him. In chapter 2 he said, the vision of what I'm going to do is for an appointed time. And when that time comes, it must come to pass. It will not tarry. So wait for it. It was encouraged. The despair that was setting in was taken away. And I said a similar situation is playing out today. Well, some of us will remember the, one of the messages of the GS not long ago, about a year or two ago. And that message was titled, If History Repeats Itself, Then What Will Happen? If history repeats itself, then history also must repeat itself. That is, the thing that happened of old, that brought about the judgment of God. If it begins to happen today, now if the people of God did what they did of old as well, the same God that has not changed will do what he did of old. And we can see in our own day that what happened even in the days of old are uh, being reenacted in our day. The Lord is looking out to see whether there are those that can stand in the room of that great prophet. And if they are getting near despair, now the Lord has a word for them. If you have been there and you have been praying, if you have been there and you have had a godly mind and you, you have not been uh, very happy with the goings on of things, even with wickedness, with sin, and all terrible things in the land. And you have prayed, and instead of getting it abetted, it's like it's increasing. The Lord has a message for you. Your prayer is not wasted. The Lord has a message for you. There is a vision set for an appointed time, and that time is with us already. And if one is there also, and um, you have been a stranger to the commonwealth of Israel, that is to say, you have not made yourself a bride of Jesus Christ. Jesus has been at the door calling. You have been telling him, I know, I know, I am going to come about. I will welcome you, I will receive you. Meanwhile, I am preoccupied with this, preoccupied with that. If you are in that circumstance and you are in this meeting, the message is also for you. It is important to recognize that the God we are serving is the one that has said, evil will not triumph forever. The triumphing of the wicked is for a moment. The days of our enemies and the enemies of God have come and gone. We are in the day of the Almighty God. And so, if anyone, by any chance, is still in the camp of the wicked, is still under the yoke of the power of darkness, is still running servant, servanthood, errand for the devil, knowingly or knowingly, but you are in this meeting, in this Great Hilltop Encounters 2022, I want to tell you that the Lord loves your soul and granted you the opportunity to come. And if only... You want to make use of your ears and might appropriately, the Lord will show you the right way up. Not only showing you that, He will bring you into it, you will go home rejoicing. Amen. Amen. Judgment is determined. He said, hand joined to hand.
the wicked were not go scot free. And that means if anyone for any reason is in that camp, the person has a good opportunity to turn around before the hammer falls. We want to get into the message proper for better understanding, looking at it from three perspectives. Number one is we're looking at divine determination for judgment, the fact that judgment is determined by God, even at this time. After that, we look at description of the judgments in question. Finally, we'll talk about the duty of the justifiable. The person that will escape the judgment of God at such a time, what are required of such a person? So the first point is to recognize that there is divine judgment. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 1 again, verses 1 to 4, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and I will not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and I will not save? Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and the red race of strife and contention. Therefore the law is locked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, Therefore, wrong, wrong judgment proceeded. Verse 5. Behold, ye among the hidden and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will walk and walk in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. Verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Looking at the situation in the days of this prophet Habakkuk, looking at his cry and how that he was getting near despair. Now, God in answer wouldn't want him to continue to be despaired, but he showed him I am going to bring judgment upon the land. I'm going to judge violence. I'm going to judge the wickedness. I am not dead. I am alive. I am the owner. And my eyes run to and fro. My eyes are pure and to behold iniquity. I see what is going on. I also hear your prayers. And I have set down the land for judgment. Incidentally, I am going to bring people from the north, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, and I will use them as a tool in my hand, even to judge the people of God, purported people of God, that have abandoned God and gone their own ways. The same thing today is playing out. We find that there is judgment going on, but there is judgment determined also. What is going on in our day? All the terrible things that are going on. And let me put it this way. There is no person that is reasonable in this country that does not know that there is anarchy in the land. Anyone? Are they all asleep? I don't ask rhetorical questions. Uh, I ask questions that require answer. Is there anyone that is reasonable that does not recognize that in this country in which we live at such a time, there is commotion, there is anarchy, there is problem, from north to south, from east to west, many people are not able to come to this meeting unlike before. Am I right? There is anarchy, there is trouble in the land. So it is not, it's not a hidden thing. It is obvious. And um, 
Many of us have prayed and prayed for divine intervention. Am I right? I want to say that judgment, what is going on right now, is a kind of judgment. Why further judgment is also determined. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 9, we are looking at verse 22. 2 Kings, chapter 9, and verse 22. And it came to pass, when, Jor when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the hordoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? This prophet Jehu had been anointed to go to execute judgment upon the apostate house of Israel under their king, Joram. When he drew near, now this king was asking the prophet, Jehu, you are coming furiously. Are you coming? Is it peace? Is it okay? He said, what, what business have you to do with peace? When the hordom, the wickedness, and the witchcrafts of your mother have filled the land. I want to say that in this country you call Nigeria, evil was imported from the land, was imported into the land from the international community, especially from 1977, when they carried out the festival of arts and culture called Festac. All the demons all over the places in the world as it were, we are giving open door and giving a welcome to this country. Following that time till date, Evil had been mounting itself. The most unfortunate one is evil that entered the church. He said, what have you to do with peace? You have called for crisis. You have called for crisis, whereas you yield, you yield yourself to hordoms, hordoms meaning immorality, sodomy, fornication and adultery, sexual perversion of different kinds, hordoms. It says it is filled the land. From there you have witchcraft, idolatry. It is filled the land. And you have wickedness, violence, bloodbath, bloodletting. It says, whereas you have all these, how can you not have crisis? How can you not have commotion? How will you talk of peace? Why will there not be anarchy? Why will there not be war? And I said... The land had been sold to evil over a long time. The most, the worst of all that, and the most devastating, was the hotum and the witchcraft that found its way in the church. Immorality in the church. Witchcraft in the church. Using the name of the Lord, and yet using some occultic power, witchcraft power, magical power, and joining into the Bible and with the name of Jesus. And God has been watching these things over the period. God has been watching the departures from the Christian paradigm of gospel of the kingdom of God. So searching gospel that prepares men for the kingdom of God. And men have diverted their focus from that gospel and onto the gospel of the welfare of this life. You call it gospel of prosperity. And that's what has filled the land. So today, among church members and ministers, no difference between their ways, between their manner, between their traits, between their inward and outward being. No difference between them and those that you say are without. Because of hordoms, because of wickedness, because of witchcraft. Now, there was a time that judgment came upon people of God. The reason was that the enemy said, we have the right, we can deal with them. Since they have abandoned their America, then we have the right to deal with them. In the book of Jeremiah, 
In the book of Jeremiah chapter 50, reading verses 6 and 7, my people have been lost sheep, their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned, they have turned them away on the mountains, they have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them. And the adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Those that found them on their way off, those that found them on the bush path where they strayed, they left the road, they left the way, went into the bush, went into the forest, went into the path that doesn't lead home. He said their enemies found them along that path, the adversaries, and defied them. And as they went on defying them, they were doing that with impunity, saying we have not done anything wrong. They have offended the Lord that, that is the habitation of justice. We have the right to deal with them. And um, that is the reason. It looks like God kept quiet and um, many people have seen wrath. Many lives have been lost. Prayers have been made and um, it looks like the enemy is getting stronger and many more people are dying. Things are getting harder and harder. Economy is nosedived. Gone the other way. Everyone is crying. Everyone is suffering. For quite some time now, people have gone to prayer camps, gone to prayer mountains, called upon God, fasted seven days, fasted 21 days, and it looks like God is not hearing. What is that matter? I said, what is going on is not unknown to God. That's not his will. But I said, evil called for evil. Wickedness called for wickedness. The enemy said, we are not doing them any wrong because since they, they said they should be light and they joined us in darkness and we are struggling with them in girlfriend and boyfriend, in politics, we are struggling with them in uh, the, the maneuvers and the wickedness. The way we do, that's the way they do. We don't see any reason why we should respect them. And so, the minister of wickedness set them up, deal with them, destroy them. I want to say that in the days of the children of Israel, if you go, you can read your scripture in the book of Judges. There were those Midianites, Judges chapter 1, chapter 6, from verse 1 to about verse 6. You will see that there was a time that the children of Israel sinned against God. And he allowed their enemies at that time, namely the Midianites, and impoverished them. They dealt with them terribly. And they brought their herdsmen, the Midianites brought their herdsmen. And they were going into the farmlands of the children of Israel and destroying the crops, destroying their lives, and the people were in jeopardy and in fear. That was because of their sin in those days. You know, why we say this? But I want to ask a question. Is anyone there? Is anyone there today? If you are conversant with the place I'm talking about, Judges chapter 6. Those uh, operation, the operation of those Midianites, did it last forever? Did God abandon Israel in their hand forever to destroy them forever? But it was important to know that while that was happening, something called for it. If they didn't offend God, God wouldn't have allowed their enemies. If they stood their ground and showed themselves as children of God, God would have made they are enemies to, he will have put them down and would not have allowed them to be strengthened against his people. So, and while this has been going on, 
the people of God, many have become despondent, many have become, are becoming weary, asking one question or the other. In the book of Malachi, we see something in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 13. Malachi 3, 13 to 15. Your words have been stout against me, say the Lord. He said, what have we spoken so against thee? He said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked monthly before the Lord of hosts? And now you call the proud happy. Yeah. They that walk wickedness are set up. Yeah. They that tempt God are even delivered. Here yeah, the prophet was talking about the state of the people. How that they had become despondent and saying, well, all these prayers you have been praying. Is God hearing that? Our dedication, our fastings. What is the prophet? Seeing that while we pray, now it looks like the worst is going on and the worst is happening. If you have been in that condition, I say, the Lord will heal your mind by the time we get to the end of this message. Because you will see that God is not dead. You will see that our God is a timely God. He has his timetable. And um, if we stay put as he wants us to stay put and do what he will have us to do, he will arise and soon those that we are to despair will rise up in glory in Jesus' name. It is important to know that the God we are serving is a God of justice. is a God of judgment. He has said, let hand join to hand. The wicked cannot escape. Let hand join to hand. Evil will not be allowed to reign forever. So the evil that appears to be reigning today, the raging of the enemy, and the apparent reigning of the adversary, and all their impunity will not carry on forever. God is arising. He has determined to deal with them. Like it is said in the days of Habakkuk, he has said the same in our day. He said he's going to do a thing. And the ears that hears, the ears that hear it shall tingle. In First Samuel chapter 3. First Samuel chapter 3. And verse 11. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that hear it shall tingle. Verse 12. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Some of us will have seen that God has begun to do something to show that there could be light in the tunnel. He said, when I begin, I will not stop halfway. I will do a thing. As he said in the days of Habakkuk, when there was such terrible evil of the people of God, and then the things that were happening, and he was crying, and um, it appears that God was not hearing. God came with the answer, I will bring judgment. Now, today, God is saying, judgment has been determined against the enemy. Now, the judgment we are talking about is inclusive of the judgment that is on ground, but is, there is also judgment that must come. That has not come yet. That brings us to describe a little bit the judgments we are talking about. Now, prophet cried, God said, don't worry, I am, on, I am on the top of the game. Judgment is coming. And he's saying the same today. I want to say, God is on the top of the game. I want to say that God is not dead. I want to say 
that God has not cast away his people forever. Is anyone there still today? Anyone hearing what I'm saying? Maybe I read it from scripture, you will like that. In, in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 5. For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God. Of the Lord of hosts, though their land be filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. God will not for, forsake Judah and Jerusalem forever. You will have heard the word of the Lord in the lip declaration by the mouth of our general pastor, the man of God, that God has not ceded this world or his church to Satan as it appears today. It appears like God has abandoned the world and even abandoned the church to his enemy going by the things that are happening. But three years ago, the word of the Lord came by the mouth of his servant that this is the day of the Lord proper when it shall be proven that God has not seeded and cannot seed his church or the world to Satan. Does anyone want to believe it? It is better to believe. Listen to this. At such a time, many people are apt to die in fear. When they get to know only what the devils have gazetted and what they are putting on ground and they are totally ignorant of what God is revealing, what God is saying. So you find them to reel out and catalog the litany of what the devils have arranged in the places, all their programs, all their devices, how that they have rounded up everywhere, what they have gazetted, when they want to take the land and overrun it with darkness, and all of us will finish, and all of us will be destroyed, and they know all that, they see the evidence, and they talk about that. Now, on the other hand, you want to ask them, what has the Lord said? What has the Lord spoken? Does the Lord have a program? Can I get an answer? Does anyone believe that the Lord has a thought for us, a program for us, for his world, for this country, for the church? If a lectic take this at such a time, it is dangerous to know only what the devils have devised, what the devils have programs, which are for real. And whether you want to know or not, they are there, you will see them and you will hear them. You will stumble into them. So they are for, they, whether anyone wants to know or not, the person must know. But if one does not make effort to want to receive and to get what the God of heaven has programmed for his people, that individual will die before the day. The person will die in fear. The person will die in despondency, in despair. The person will die in hopelessness. Some people are going committing suicide. But now, those that know their God are not in those camps at all. So it is important to know that God has not seeded the world he created. I agree wholeheartedly that there are not two Jehovah's. I agree wholeheartedly that the world in which we live is not a joint venture. Is anyone agreeing with me as well? There are no two that created the world. The God Almighty that is a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Beside him, there is no other God anywhere on the earth. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? Maybe you don't know what I'm saying or you don't believe it. I said, aside of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose son is Jesus Christ, whom you and I happen to be following and serving as our father. Beside him, there is no other person that owns existence. There is no other person that created this world, that owns it, that controls it, that is at the apex of all things, that is at the hem of our faith. No other, all other that purport to be God are created beings. There is no other beside Jehovah. And so, 
I can totally agree that he has not and cannot abandon the world he created by his own imagination, by his own wisdom, that he cannot abandon it because of the swift oppressions of his enemy, because of the wickedness of his enemy. Neither can he abandon the church that he sent his only begotten son into this world to die for. He cannot abandon it. And someone will say, like you have said before, if, if the people sin, he will abandon them. Yes, he will do that temporarily. And that is the reason I said that what is happening is like he kept quiet and the enemies have been exceeding and exercising great authority and doing a lot of mayhem, a lot of destruction. But that doesn't go on forever. Now he has determined that judgment is now coming upon his enemy. So judgments in question, we have, uh, if we talk of judgment, we, judgment of God can be looked at in two, from two angles, judgment in the interim and judgment in eternity. Judgment in the interim. Judgment in the interim includes what we have described already that is going on. But over and above that, there is impending interim judgment before eternal judgment. Which judgment is that? In still talking about the lip declaration by the mouth of the man of God three years ago, 2019, 17 points. The 17th point said, and I had an angel add this, saying, welcome all the first, second, third rage, all the oppressors, all the tyrants, all the arrogant, all the haughty, all the despots, wicked, all the pharaohs, Nebuchadnezzars, all the Sennacheribs, the Herods, all the Belshazzars, and all the people that are operating like Adolfus Hitler. That's what we call the, the, the first, second, and third rage. The Nazis. All the people that manifest impunity, that make themselves God, and say we can do and undo. We have our men in power. We have our men in authority. And there's nobody that can do us anything. And this is happening. Some people that could be refrost in the land even, they have bragged and said, well, you call police, you call army, no one will listen to you. We are everywhere. We are everywhere. We have our network operation. No one will deliver you. And as far as this country is concerned, you have no hope. We are the people calling the shot. You are just done for. And they are saying all that. But then, Judgment, listen, when you hear all those things, all those rantings of the wicked, all those rantings of Sennacherib and his servants, Rabsheke, against the people of God, saying you are wasting your time, you said you are praying, <laughs> go, go to the mountain, pray, pray. I was told as someone said during the previous election, if you say you are serving God, Go to pray to that God that this fellow that is our man will not win election. Go and pray. And they are right here saying all that. Say, so which God will deliver you? We are the people. The land belongs to us. We are everywhere. Well, I, when you hear such things, those that know their God and know the truth, they should know that this is the ranting of Satan, who is a liar. By the way, who owns the world? Did the world create itself? By the way, which God created the world? Idols. This world is owned by the God of Abraham, who is our father. Is he dead? Now, 
you want to know that what they have said is the voice of the deceiver. And I tell people that soon they will know that the idol God they are following has deceived them because Satan is a liar. Is Satan a liar? Now you got to promise the land you didn't create. You are a stupid liar. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the enemy. Are you with me? The land you didn't create. You can only get it ceded to you when the owner is dead. When the owner has gone and, uh, and is finally gone, uh, gone extinct, that's when you can now go to usurp the land. But Jehovah is alive. I said Jehovah is alive. And he liveth in whom we live. And so we shall not only survive, we shall reign. I, sh I said we shall reign in life. And in this land we shall reign. Jesus shall reign. And Jesus' people shall reign. So, Amen. God has determined judgment. Apart from the eternal judgment in this interim, like I was saying, in that time, um, leave declaration point 17, it says, Welcome that the angel of the Lord came announcing, Welcome, all ye. All you narcissists, all you, that all you that manifest impudence and impunity against God, who make yourself God in your arrogance and saying we are and all that. Welcome to the humiliation program of the Almighty. That is, welcome to the judgment of God. God that did it in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. And after he arose in arrogance and said, this is the kingdom I have arrogated to myself, was he not taught a lesson at a point? So that he will know that the Most High is the one that rules in the kingdom of human beings and gives it to whomsoever wills. All I'm saying is that that Most High that ruled in the kingdom of the heathen of old is the same ruling in the kingdom of Nigeria and all the world today. Can I hear an amen? Do you believe he is ruling? If you don't want, he will not rule in your life. But if you agree, you will see him running. And for those that agree with him, you will see things turn around. We shall not, we shall not die, we shall live. So, welcome to the humiliation program of the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar is not going to get away with it. Pharaoh will not brag forever. I said, Pharaoh will not brag forever. In the, in the days of old, when that history was operating, did Pharaoh reign forever? So you want to tell me that that God is dead? That the Pharaohs of today will win the day? Nebuchadnezzar of today will win the day? God said he will do a thing. He will shake the land. He will shake the kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar will cry. All their servants that have made the right thing against the people of God say, you stay there and say you are praying. They told the people of God in the days of uh, Hezekiah, say, don't let your king and your prophet Isaiah, King Hezekiah, deceive you. And say, God will deliver you. Which God will deliver any land from the great king of Assyria? What about all these lands, the people of Eva, Seth of them, and the rest of them? Which of them... I've had their God deliver them from the hand of the great king. Who is the Lord that will deliver you? Don't let Hezekiah deceive you. The one speaking to Hezekiah, don't deceive yourself. Say you are praying to God. If they have told you all that and you have had all that, well, it has been hard in the time past. Are you with me? Well, such wrong things have been hard in the time. But those that know their God, they will shine soon. They will be strong and do exploit. Because when the chiefs were down, that synagogue that was a lord, does anyone know what happened? God sent an angel, and then 185,000 were killed in a swoop. And that king that was a kind of God ran away, panting around, and God will not let him escape. God can use anything. God can use anything. No, he escaped. But when he went to the house of his God called Nisroch, God stirred up the people that came from his own lines, his own children. 
And they went there and cut off his neck. And another son of his called Isahadam reigned in his state. Did you get my point? If any man swear, please the Lord, God will raise, God will raise instruments that will fight for the person. The great warrior in the Bible, in the book of Judges, chapter 9, called Abimelech. Who killed Abimelech? Thank you very much. A woman, warrior that killed all the people of Shechem. And then it was escaping. A woman just took a stone from across the wall and fling, flung it on him. And the warrior was finished. There are women today God will use. There are devils today God will use to take off the head of Goliath without any, without, without any instrument. Goliath that is fortified. It is the day of judgment. I say it is the day of judgment. When you know the devices of the, of the enemy, please come to know the design of the Almighty. And take sides with the Lord. And God will empower all such people in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to walk. He has not ceded the world or his church to Satan. Judgment is determined in the interim. God made me to know that particularly. That, that was some months ago, up to six months or one year, less than one year, that what was going on was going to continue. And that, that soon it will take a new turn. And all the people that have names, were not, some of the people that have names, God is going to bring judgment upon them. I said God is going to fish out some of the people that have names, Mark it. And that is a judgment determined. All the Nebuchadnezzar that says it is by our power. Not knowing that God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to be used as instrument because the people of God sinned. He thought that it was because he was strong. And so he arrogated it to himself. Now God brought judgment by the hands of the, of the people of Midas and Persia. So today, all the people that have connived with the wicked, and the instrument to deal with the people of God here and there the judgment of God has been designed against them from north to south from east to west watch what will happen I say some of the big names will not escape the judgment that has been determined to let someone to know that this world didn't create itself to let someone to know like our GS we put it that someone is in charge or rather, someone is calling the shot. It has to be proven in our day that Satan is not the one calling the shot. It, it has to be proven in our day that this country, Nigeria, does not belong to the idol that people are facing the, the sun to worship. Nigeria, Africa, and the whole world belongs to the great Jehovah. And it shall be, who owns Nigeria will, will soon be proven. Did you get my point? Who owns this country will soon be proven. And the owner has decided to arise. I said, that may a number of people that thought that power belonged to them, that thought that the world is their own, that thought that, uh, you know, who will do us anything? Someone, soon they will run away. I said, soon they will run like Sinakari. And some of them, people that come from their lawyers will cut off their head. Some of them evil will arise from their bosom, from their camp, and from their clique, and from their militia group. Evil will arise from there. Is God able to do it? Judgment in the interim is coming upon the one. The one that has been going on is seizing soon. And then this other side of picking those that felt that they are God, who are not God. God has timed them. I said they have been weighed in the balance. And they have been found one thing in the balance of God. And soon it shall be proven. Does anyone agree? Apart from the interim judgment, interim judgment in two, two swoops, the one that is ongoing, which is even affecting the masses and the people of God, and the one that is coming selectively. And the people that were instruments of wickedness, who arrogated power and everything to themselves, and they do, not, they do not give God the glory. Time for their judgment is now. 
Now, but then if we talk about judgment determined, we, we didn't mention eternal judgment that has been determined, then we didn't do well. The most horrible aspect of judgment, by the way, judgment that we are talking about, we assume everyone knows the meaning, the contextual meaning of judgment we are talking about. That is misfortune or calamity that is being meted as a result of punish, as a matter of punishment or retribution for offense. Punishment coming as a matter of, or rather due to offense. And um, if anyone is there, even though you have not joined the camp of uh, the impudent, those that manifest impunity in all their arrogance against God, nevertheless, you are in their kingdom in that you are an agent perpetrating darkness. The devil is the minister of darkness. Now you are living in, in, the, in the mystery of iniquity. That is to say, in the camp of the devil, and you are helping the devil to propagate his kingdom. Listen to this. Is anyone listening? Is anyone listening? One is helping the devil to propagate and expand his kingdom when you are taking up anything that belongs to him. Wickedness belongs to the devil. Sin belongs to the devil. Immorality is the devil's handwork. Lying. Whatsoever that is evil, they are not from the kingdom of light. They are from the kingdom of darkness. Am I right? Anyone, boy or girl, Knowingly or unknowingly, you are yielding yourself to immorality, to lying, to arrogance, to wickedness, to godlessness of any kind. That person is lining up for judgment. That person has, has included himself or herself in the kingdom of darkness. And it's not those we that we should remain there. There is the more horrible judgment that is coming, and that is judgment that leads into eternity. I just read you Second Thessalonians chapter 1 from verse 6. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, those who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. In Romans 2, Verses 8 and 9, the same thing. That God will visit with judgment those that are contentious. Contentious, who do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. He said he will bring indignation upon them. He will bring tribulation upon them. In Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15, it talks about the great white throne judgment. When all that ever have died will be judged. Those that were buried, he said, the, the sea will give up the dead in them, and hell will give up those that are in them, and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. Hell is for real, and the wicked shall be turned into hell. Hand joined to hand, the wicked will not go unpunished. So if you are there, if for any reason you escape, the interim judgment. I want to say that the, the thing that is going on, many people have got their lives cut short. And many people have got their lives cut short without preparation. Dying in darkness without Christ. That is terrible. If God has helped you and your life is preserved to this moment, glory be to God. But you can escape. You can escape both interim and eternal judgment. That brings me to mention quickly the duty of the justifiable. The duty of the justifiable. 
In Jeremiah chapter 39, verses 11 and 14, I will not read it because of our time. The justifiable there will mean those who qualify for the preferential treatment that this prophet of God called Jeremiah got in his day. If you read that place, 39 from 11, you found that when the judgment came upon the sinning house of Judah, there was a watchman that escaped. He was treated preferentially. That was, uh, that was Jeremiah. Jeremiah took an exception. Jeremiah didn't join them in, the, in their band wagon of sin. He was rather prophesying, telling them what God has said. He stood a different ground. He was vexed with their wickedness. He was crying and speaking to them. Now, when they didn't repent and the hammer fell, judgment came. Jeremiah was spared. May you be spared. I said Jeremiah was spared. He was a watchman in his day. May you be spared. Now, to be spared, you have to, Jeremiah was justified to be treated preferentially. Is anyone listening to me? I, I didn't read the scripture because of time. I said in that, Jeremiah 39, 11 to 14, he was singled out. And the people that came destroying were given instruction by their king. This man that is prophet, don't manhandle him. Treat him well. Don't carry him captive. Give him opportunity. If he wants to stay in the land, take care of him. Don't deal with him. Don't manhandle him. He is a special person. May the Lord single you out as special. May the Lord single you out for preferential treatment. May the Lord single you out for favorable treatment. At such time of anarchy, in the name of Jesus Christ, he is doing it already, and he will yet do it to many, if we will not befall you. Now, to qualify for that, three things I mentioned, we will just rise. To qualify for preferential treatment, to qualify for that, to be justified for that. Number one, one has to make up one's mind, depart from the camp of the godless. If you want to escape the judgment, interim, that is going on. You want to survive. You want to get preferential treatment. Listen, God said, a thousand shall fall by thy side, 10,000 by thy right hand. Is that right? Is that right? That can be your portion. I said, a thousand can be falling by the side. 10,000 can be falling by the right hand. But you will go scot-free. That is appointed for you. The Jeremiah's, the watchmen of our day. I say, may everyone here be a partaker. To do that, you must elect, number one, depart from the camp of the godless. If you have not turned around from the world and from their wicked ways and sinful ways, if you have not repented, you still have the opportunity now. In Acts 2.40 says, save yourself from this unto world generation. Genesis 19.17. Genesis 19.17. Now, those angels that came to destroy the world of Sodom and Gomorrah said to the to Lord, judgment is coming. Destruction is coming. Escape for your life. Escape. Go to the mountain. There is opportunity to escape by turning around away from sin, repenting in dust and ashes, bye-bye to the world and the wicked ways, and yield your life to the Savior who is at the door saying, I died for you. Whoever that does that, you will, you will be justified. You will be justified to be made free. You will, not, you will not be caught in the web of wickedness and the destruction of today. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will protect you. Secondly, dedicate yourself to the service of God. If you say I'm a believer, I want to tell you that the Lord is looking for the Davis who will take the head of the mesmerizing Goliath. Goliath that is defying the army of God. 
I say judgment is determined against Goliath, but there must be David to deliver the judgment. Does anyone agree? Goliath will not escape because of the ranting, because of his arrogance. Nebuchadnezzar will not escape. Belshazzar will not escape. But there must be Daniels. There must be Davids. There must be Elishas. So, the camp, the camp, the camp, or rather depart from the camp of the wicked and dedicate self to the service of your maker. He said, if any man purges himself of this, he will be a vessel unto honor. So you can dedicate yourself further. You can consecrate yourself further. And now, the Lord will put his fire upon your soul. Finally, delight, in, delight yourself in the quickening power of the Spirit. It is the spirit that quickens. John 6, 63 tells us, it is the spirit that quickens. It's not by power, it's not by mind. It is by the spirit of the Lord. I said, it's not of him that will it, of him that run it, but it's of God that show it. Uh, but if there is first a willing mind, now God will, God will do his own. We do our Lord, and he will do his Lord. One has to decamp, Depart from the camp of the wicked. Is anyone ready to do that? Is anyone ready to part ways with the wicked? Even if you have been near a little, if you have been near, if you have been in compromise, a little way, drawing closer to them, admiring their ways and their worldliness, the Lord said, they come clearly. Secondly, dedicate yourself to the service of the Almighty. Is God worthy of our service? Remember that the devils have a lot of servants. Remember that the devil have a lot of people running their errors, showcasing the work of the devil, men and women. There are men in the camp of the devil. And you are saying, I belong to Jesus. Shouldn't you dedicate yourself and shine out? Shouldn't you stand clearly out for Jesus? Should we remain ashamed of Christ? Should we remain as bench warmers, lukewarm Christians? Not cold, not hot. Don't we remember that God said, because you are neither hot nor cold, you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. May God not spew someone here out. So, there is need for dedication. And finally, I said, you have to delight in and draw from the quickening power of the Spirit. Because of our own sense, we can do nothing. And the Spirit of God is here to quicken, to raise someone up, to fill your cup, to anoint you again to take you to a higher ground, to take you to mountaintop experience, so that you can stand as a Jeremiah, so that you can stand as an Isaiah in your day, so that you can be a Joseph, a David, barring his error, so that we can be people that are fearless warriors. Fearless, do you know that David took the head of Goliath, and he took the head of Goliath with Goliath's own sword? Goliath came with all the sophisticated weapon of his day. Sword, stave, chisel, whatever, with all the decking coat of men and with everything. Young David, youth, ruddy youth, young man, had only had nothing, just a sling and a stone. When the chiefs were down, Goliath, David took the head of Goliath. He beat Goliath with his own sword. He cut off his head with his own sword because David was anointed of the Lord. Because the anointing of the God of Jacob was upon him. The same thing can be your portion. And I can tell you that that's one of the reasons, reasons God brought you to this place. And may you not miss your portion. In Jesus' name. My time has been reaching off. Maybe we pray a little before I go away. Is it okay? Will you allow me to pray a little? Amen. Amen. I do not know whether anyone received the message at all. Come on. You want to pray? What do we do, rise? Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. May God help someone. Christ Shekaya Barakusma Ten. May God help someone. You think we are preaching for entertainment? <laughs> judgment is determined but you can be a Jeremiah that is treated preferentially I said you have a duty to do the camp from the, depart from the camp of the wicked 
Delight yourself in the service of the Lord. Draw from the quickening power of the Spirit. And God will make someone a David in our day. Barring the mistake, the error of his life. And the Lord will not bring us here so that we just, uh, after staying and then, all that we go as we came. It will not be your portion. You can open your mouth. I don't have the time. You can open your mouth and pray to the Lord whatever you gather from the message. Judgment is determined. Are you among them that will die in fear? Because of the wickedness of the wicked? Those that know their God, what will happen? What will happen? Those that know their God, what will happen? May the Lord make you strong. May the knowledge of the Lord come into your soul. Those that know their God will be strong. They will be fearless warriors. The Lord is looking for fearless warriors. Fearless David. Remember, in the days of David, even the old king, the old king of Israel, Saul, was afraid. All the armies of Israel were afraid. But there was an anointed young man in the midst. I said the Lord can find an, I, the Lord can find a young man in our midst today. The Lord can find a young lady in our midst today. May the Lord find somebody. Open your mouth, talk to the Lord. Judgment is ongoing. Judgment is ongoing. But Jeremiah, that judgment was not for him. Jeremiah, that judgment was not for him. I said, sister, that judgment that was ongoing, devastation of the house of Judah for their sin, it was not for the prophet Jeremiah. God can make you a prophetess. Brother, God can make you a prophet like Jeremiah by the anointing of his spirit. Open your mouth. It's not for entertainment. Open your mouth. Let's open our mouths. Call upon him. If the Lord does not help you, who will help you? Are you despaired and despondent? The Spirit of God will raise you up. The Lord will raise someone from the dust. Who will help others? Many people are cast down in the villages, in the cities and towns. When you return from this mountain, what message do you have? What will you carry home? I say, what will you carry home? What gift will you give to anybody, sister? Kusma. Reiki Kosa Padrama. And push the Kaya Mahan. Se Kaya Matoloroko Provida Masan. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. All I need that I had has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Sekata. Leko pro shekata rama kuski raman. Leko pro noto zasa kapara makato so provinia. Leko shekai doman. Ambroski la kapere. Rekamatozi alo kapresi. Rekamatozi pere. I said the Lord can raise a Daniel. And it's a necessity. The Lord is looking to raise Elisha. Those that will be instruments. Judgment is determined. Instead of you to pass through the judgment, you can be an instrument to prosecute the judgment. God will use the Daniels to prosecute the judgment. God will use the Davies to prosecute the judgment. If you listen to that and agree to it, you need to open your mouth. 
and say to the Lord, pass me not by. Oh Lord, I am here for something. Touch me one more time. Shira Kayama. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch our lives. Touch us one more time, oh Lord. Touch us one more time, oh Lord. We need the touch of the Master. We need the touch of the Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Father, touch our lives. If you are singing, open your mouth and sing it unto the Lord. Touch me one more time. Open your mouth, sing it. Let that song be your prayer. I need the touch of the master. I need the touch of the Lord. Touch me one more time. Oh Jesus, touch my life. Touch me. Touch me one more time. Savior, touch our lives. Touch me one more time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need a touch of the master. Cry it out to the Lord. I need a touch, I need a touch of the master. I need a touch of the Holy Ghost. your hand up a little bit so that we can ask him to
to make us his hands extended. This is a moment of choice. While, while the people of Sodom and Gomorrah perished, Lot escaped. Kamatorakaya. This is a moment of choice. While the people of Israel and their army, apostate army, were dying in fear, David was the man that delivered the day. He made the day for the people. In the days of Jeremiah, while the people of Judah and Jerusalem were cried, crying and carried captive, Jeremiah was a king because he took a strong exception. This is the time of decision. What do you want? Not to be carried away by the flood of the enemy. You're right. A judgment prosecutor in God's hand. A judgment prosecutor. You don't want to be a tool and a summon to the wicked. You want to be an instrument in the hand of the kingdom. Instrument in the hand of the kingdom. Many are dying. Many are perishing. When you return from this mountain, what will you give them? What will you, will you have a message for them? The Lord can touch you. In Jesus' name we pray. Karamasan. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, loving Jesus. Kamatela karakuna sapela. Yeko so paladra. Yekoku rosai kamat. Reku kamat. Reku kaso kapeli maha. Reku ma. Reku poni maha. Ejeko tu sama. Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to pray for all those that want to make themselves justifiable by the first point of departing from the camp of the godless. Want to see your hand up? I just make a short declaration that we hold now. Decamping, decam, departing from the camp of the godless, wherever you are. Wherever you see the godless in the village, in the city, at school, all the cult members and all the wicked people, their yoke over your life shall be broken. I say by the power of the anointing, the yoke is already being broken. So, as such people lift up their hands, the breaking of the yoke will begin to be experienced. Lift up your hand if you, are if you are departing, you are determined to depart from the camp of the godless. Lift up your hand, right hand. Lift it up very well, God bless you. Wave it. Let your right hand, lay your left hand on your heart. Pray after me. Almighty God, in the name of your son Jesus, I come as a prodigal son, as a wretched sinner. Oh, great father, have mercy. I am a returning pilgrim. I am a returning prodigal son. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon my waywardness. Have mercy upon me for my wickedness. Today, I turn with all my heart. And I pray that you forgive my transgressions. The ones I've done openly or secretly. 
Forgive my transgressions in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I ask that you come into my life. Satan, I reject you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I reject your bondage. I reject your agreement. I reject your covenants. I reject all your covenants, all the agreements, all the promises, all the contracts that I have signed expressly or unexpressly, expressly or impliedly, all the contracts I signed directly or by proxy. Right now, right now, I, you call your name, I reject, renounce all the agreements, all the promises. I withdraw, I willingly withdraw my spirit, soul, and body from your group, from your camp, from your way, from your kingdom. I withdraw in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I surrender wholeheartedly. There is no one that comes to you that will cast out. No one that comes to you that you will cast out. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Deliver me. Free me. Come into my life. Give me the power to live as a child of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. This prayer is not fulfillment of obligation. If it came from the depth of your soul, something has already happened. And what you will require is a follow-up by taking the counsels and then following as you are asked to follow. Soon you will see that it happened true, true. Thank you, my father. Now, the camp, departing from the camp of the enemy, cons consecrating or dedicating to the Lord, to the service of the Lord, and then drawing from the anointing power of the Spirit. To be his eyes extended, finally lift up your hand. Everyone now can be justified. Everyone that can be, can be selected. Anyone that was can be selected to be a Jeremiah. Thank you, my father. Oh, to be his hand extended. Oh, to be Jesus' hand extended in the village. Oh, to be Jesus' hand extended in the city. To be Jesus' hand ex extended in the towns. Jesus' hand extended in the campuses. Wherever human beings are found. Lord, if history repeats itself, history must repeat itself. I said there are mesmerized and Goliaths. There are Goliaths in our day. And there must be devils that will take the battle to the gate of the enemy. There are many souls that are languishing and crying in fear. There are many Israelites that are languishing and crying in fear. At such a time, it was necessary that devils should come on board. Real companion. History has repeated itself. Therefore, Lord of glory, complete the other side of the equation. Yeah, good Saman. I say your people have come to the Rock Chapel, to the mountain of transfiguration of soul and spirit. Recommend, you have determined judgment. Blessed Redeemer, you will need a man. You will need a woman to prosecute judgment. You will need tools in your hand. You will need instruments in your hand. Raise your son here. You are not looking for already made tools. You make your own instrument. Yeah. You said you follow me and I will make you. And I have followed you, followed you these three days. And soon it will be time to go. Raise your son about 10. Reko Maha. In the name of the Lord Jesus, eternal Father, I pray, 
Let the quickening power of the Spirit do an operation. Scripture said, those that were quickened in the, that were dead in the flesh became quickened by the Spirit. Dead in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Precious Redeemer, I pray, let someone be located by the Spirit, by the quickening Spirit, and let the weary be strengthened. Let the cast down be lifted. Let the fearful be made fearless. Let the unanointed receive an anointing. Let the powerless receive power from on high. I say, let someone receive an endowment of fire. It's not by power, it's not by might. It is by the Holy Ghost. It is by the Holy Ghost. It is by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is still doing his work. And whosoever wills will be located. Holy Spirit, take these hands that say, I want to be your hand extended. Take these hands now, men and women, and fill their cup. Fill someone's cup. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, while you still have your hand, if you are able to still keep it a bit up, something is coming. We are not fulfilling obligation. Someone is being lifted up. The Lord is visiting someone. Yeah, and the fearful is made, is made faithful. Fearful is turned to faithful. Say, man. Fearful and be made fearless. I said there is something going on. Yes. Yes. You are not going home as you came. Receive. Receive. Receive an anointing. Anointing of wisdom. Anointing of wisdom. Anointing of wisdom. Anointing of power. Anointing of fearlessness. Anointing of the boldness of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Receive. Yes. Boldness. And we know that you are being unto the Lord Chapel. Receive it. And you will know that you are being unto the mountain of transfiguration. Receive. It's coming. Yes. It's coming. I said it's already there. Quicken by the Spirit. Quicken by the Spirit. Receive quickening by the Spirit. Quicken in your inner man. Strengthen in your inner man. Heavenly Father, I said there is need for the Daniels for today. Lord, I said there is need for the Daniels of our day. There is need for it. There is need for the Davies. And if you don't select the Davies from among, among watchmen use, from where will the Davies come? From where will the deliverers come? These youths that are willing. They want to take the battle to the gates of the enemy. Heavenly Father, let the willing be anointed with fire. Now, 
now. Now. Anointed with fire. Now. Anointed with fire. Now. Yes. Anointed with a fire in your bone. Holy Ghost fire burning in your bone. The anointing is now. Yes. Kaposkina. Kaposka tepele. Elisheka. La pori katele. El pori kara so dele. Asoka la pori. Those that will take the battle to the gate of the wicked. Those that will be prosecutors. Prosecutors. Prosecutors of the judgment of the Lord. Instruments in God's hand. Where are they? Instruments. The camp in the camp of the wicked to be instrumented in the hand of God. Where are they? If you indicate something is coming upon you, if you indicate, I said the anointing of fire is coming upon someone. Now, now, thank you, Jesus. I said, now, now, now. Fearless warriors, fearless prayer warriors, fearless and faithful prayer warriors, the Lord is ordaining them. You prayed before, the Lord said we should pray on. Fearless, faithful prayer warriors, where are they? The Lord is anointing them. Scarra ma tela. Seku poli mahan. Seku poti la mate. Ye kera kutole. Ye kera kiko tete le karosan. Kero kapolo tos matela. Receive it. I say receive your portion. Someone, there is a great blessing coming upon someone, but the person is being distracted. Turn around and receive. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh Lord, I pray. Confirm your word. It is not for entertainment. Oh Lord, my God. I pray that beginning from this hour, this moment, someone that is in this meeting is going home elevated. Those that have been in the pit of despair and discouragement, I command you to be lifted up. There is restoration for the hour. Those that have been on the firing line for the Lord, in the recent past, they are so, so downcast, something is coming for you. Yes. Receive the anointing of restoration. All the lost gifts restored. Lost evangelistic fire restored. I say lost evangelistic fire is being restored. Receive it for you. Restoration fire for you. Restoration of prayer life. Receive it for you. 
restoration of your dedication. Restoration of your first love. Receive it for real. Oh Lord, let the fire of love come down. Let the fire of service come down. Let the fire of watchman dedication come down and take over. Watchman dedication. Watchman sacrificial service. There is fire that goes with it. Blessed Jehovah, release the fire to the willing. Now. Lord, let it come now. Let it come now. Thank you, Father. The fire of uncompromising Christian life. Fire of non-compromise in Christianity is locating some people. You will not compromise anymore. You will not be in between the fence anymore. You will be deep neck. Something will be working on you. That is the fire of the grace of revival. Yeah, yeah. I said that fire can be your portion. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Thank you, my father. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Finally, I said by the word of God, is written in 1 Peter 3.18, that those that were dead in the flesh will be quickened by the spirit. Spirit of the living God. All these your children, boys and girls that have come to your house, I command that in, the, in any area that they have been dead in the flesh, listen, listen, in Jesus' name, the dead in the flesh are promised quickening by the Spirit. And I make the declaration if you believe it will hold for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these young brothers and sisters who have left their homes and came to God's house, even to the Rock Chapel, for this Mount of Transfiguration experience, hilltop encounters. I pray that this scripture in 1 Peter 3, 18 might hold for them. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask, locate them that, are, that have been put to death in the flesh, one way or the other. The flesh, their eyes, their brains, their tissues, their bones, all the elements of the body that have been diseased and destroyed. You said the spirit will turn it around. The spirit will quicken them. I command all those aspects of the body, elements of the body, organs of the body that have been put to death, that have been put diseased, put to death physical body. I command those elements of the body, receive a turnaround. Receive the fire of quickening. Be quickened by the Holy Ghost. Eyes be quickened. Stomach be quickened. Bones be quickened. Brain be quickened. Heart be quickened. Waist be quickened. Ears be quickened. Wherever that you were put to death, disease and death, if anything is dead, is unoperative, cannot operate, non-functional. Any aspect of your body that is diseased and made to malfunction or not to function, the Spirit of God is here to quicken that portion. Right now, be quickened. 
receive the quickening by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, my Father. I said the quickening of your physical body is your portion. You believe it, it is with you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive your physical quickening in Jesus' name. From the crown of your head to the toes of your feet, receive it. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.